Okay, ladies, we are ready. I hope, I hope the suspense was exciting, but we are ready to introduce the Mary Harriman Award recipient. It's a fitting coincidence that this year's Mary Harriman Award recipient made her name as a community leader in Mary's own backyard. Just as Mary started a community of women dedicated to changing New York City and ended, and ended up sparking a much larger movement, all of us and over 140,000 women around the world, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney also has used her experiences Carolyn M M Maloney has used her experiences in both politics and the Junior League as a launching pad for policies that have helped support so many women leaders of tomorrow. Carolyn moved to New York shortly after college and was looking for a way to embrace her new city and lend her energy and spirit to help those in need. She began by working as a tutor, preparing welfare recipients to take their GED exams. Here, Carolyn saw firsthand the impact of a strong educational program and what that can do to bolster people's self-confidence and to give them the tools to succeed. When the program lost its funding, Carolyn approached local legislators and convinced them to bring it back. She's a woman who gets things done. The experience had a powerful impact on the way Carolyn would approach her community work in the future, realizing that there was an opportunity to affect policy long before it was adopted. It was this realization that she needed a seat at the table that compelled her to run for the New York City Board of Education and the New York State Assembly. And just as Mary Harriman had worked tirelessly to address the most pressing issues of her time, Carolyn has dedicated her career in public service to identifying the challenges women face and becoming powerful forces within their communities and nationwide. Sounds like a pretty unstoppable woman. After serving for 10 years on New York City Council, Carolyn was elected to Congress, where she has spent nearly 25 years as a member of the United States House of Representatives. And it gets so much better. Carolyn has established a record as a tenacious advocate for women's equality, women's health, child welfare, and so much more. As a Congresswoman, Carolyn has been a vocal champion for ending human trafficking, improving senior citizen care, elevating the lives and opportunities of working families, and nurturing early childhood education. Carolyn has passed more than 70 measures in Congress, with 10 of her bills being signed into law at official signing ceremonies. We all know how hard that is. But her work goes even further than that, far beyond New York, striving to improve the quality of life of all women, both in the United States and globally. A passionate supporter of the United Nations Population Fund Carolyn has spearheaded several initiatives providing crucial maternal health programs to women all over the world. Back here at home, Carolyn has been a tireless champion for women's equality, reintroducing the Equal Rights Amendment for the 11th time <laughs> as a direct result of her work a hundred lawmakers have signed on to the amendment, along with a groundswell of support from key women's groups across the country. And yet, throughout all of this success, Carolyn, like so many of us, has come face to face with countless system, systemic barriers 
attempting to nullify her voice and impede her progress while working long, grueling hours to bridge party lines to pass legislation designed to help women across the country, Carolyn constantly faced judgment from her male counterparts. What did they question? They questioned her decision to work while raising a family. And like for so many of us, that only reminded her of why she was doing the work in the first place. <laughs> Pushing to work that much harder towards a women-honored future. All the while, she committed herself to being a loving and devoted mother, not to mention hero, to two amazing daughters, Christina and Virginia. The same passion for women's equality that Carolyn has demonstrated on Capitol Hill is reflected in all that she does for the Junior League of the City of New York. She has served as a powerful force on the Public Affairs Committee helping to tell the story of progress and change that the League is bringing to all corners of the city. Using philanthropy, volunteerism, and community programs as tools to combat some of New York's most pressing human issues. Carolyn has proven over and over again her fearlessness in taking risks to stand up for her values and the policy she believes will make life better for all of us. Just as Harry, Mary Harriman sparked movement of women leaders that spread across the nation, Carolyn has carried on that mission, helping new generations of women open up the doors of opportunity and leadership and progress. For that, we say thank you and honor her commitment with the 2018 Mary Harriman Award. Please join me in congratulating Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney. Congresswoman Maloney is an example of what each one of us can do. Even if you don't believe that you have, have that ability to influence and advocate, she's a terrific example of someone who started at the New York Junior League as a volunteer and really took that to the next level and the level after that. I would describe her as an activist, a feminist, a pioneer, a force to be reckoned with. She has accomplished more for New York than anyone who preceded her. Carolyn is tireless. She's persistent. She is never going to give up on something that she knows is important. I've learned that the quickest way to get something done is to watch around Carolyn, and if a person tells her no, she gets it done. I was born in North Carolina and raised in Virginia. I visited New York and I never left. I just fell in love with the city. And when I moved here, I didn't really know anyone. And I wanted to be more involved in the fabric of the civic life and uh, the, the uh, goals of the Junior League and serving the community. It's also uh, a way to meet people and to forge friendships. Uh, I never had a plan to go to Congress or even to go into public service. When I talked to my male colleagues, they say, well, when I was two, I knew I was going to Congress and I'm going to be president. They always had these huge aspirations, but sometimes women don't, until recently, have the same aspirations. When I went to Congress in, in 1992 and saw the Capitol Dome, my, my heart started pounding with excitement. I still have that wonderful feeling that you can make a difference. You can uh, strengthen the freedoms that, that we have and cherish and, 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 and really working for and preserving the American dream. Something that Carolyn has always, always told me was that if you don't like something, then you change it. If you're the only woman in the room, then you work to make room for more women. If you are just one voice and the minority voice, then you be loud. I'm proud to count myself among the legions of women Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney has encouraged, mentored, and promoted to run for elected office in my unexpected election to Congress in 2011. In the throes of a very difficult race, Carolyn called me daily with encouragement, leaving messages saying, Kathy, it's Carolyn, you're a winner, I believe in you. Uh, when women succeed, America succeeds, and communities succeed. 
And when women succeed around the world, there's less violence, uh, there's less terrorism, there's more focus on education and health care. So empowering women and uh, to participate and to lead in their communities is uh, very important. The Junior League is really the go-to organization for women's civic leadership and Carolyn embodies that spirit like no one else. It's important uh, to find a passion, something that you really want to do. And if you find a passion, then work is never work. She passes more bills than anyone. She doesn't, doesn't talk about them. She just gets them passed. And she's had many firsts. I think she was the first woman to give birth when she was a council member. <laughs> I would say that my proudest moments was the birth of my two children. My daughters also uh, came out at the Junior League. That was exciting, wonderful memories with my late husband and myself. Carolyn is a fantastic role model. So, of course, the mission of the Junior League is about improving communities. And we do that through direct service, but also through advocacy. And that's one part of our work that is sometimes overlooked. We're so proud of her. No matter what side of the, the aisle you're on, she really does embrace our mission and really advocates for those who, who need our help the most. The country needs more women and needs more women representatives in Congress and the Senate like Carolyn. Congresswoman Maloney is a national icon a force for positive change, and I cannot think of a more deserving person than her for this award. I'm surprised every day. I was surprised when I won this award. I feel that uh, Mary Harriman and I worked on a lot of the same issues. Consumer protection. The League has always been an important part of my work in Congress. I can't tell you how much support means when you're trying to push to get something done and everybody's saying no, 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 no. And then you can lean back and think, well, I've got the Junior League supporting it. <laughs> I'm not alone. <laughs> it's an outstanding organization. I'm very proud to be a member of it. Please join me in congratulating Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, the two, 200, the two, 2018 winner of the Mary Harriman Community Leadership Award. Now it's my honor to welcome this year's Mary Harriman Community Leadership Award winner, Congressman Carolyn Maloney. In addition to the Tiffany silver tray from AJLI, we give you a big thank you to Laura, our favorite Laura, <laughs> Junior League of Jacksonville, member of our own Laura Lively, a Junior League favorite for this extra gift. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My understanding is that under someone's cup and saucer is an additional 25% discount, that is. One at every table. So everybody needs to look. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Oh, do 
I talk now? Yes, you do. Okay. Thank, thank you so much. I'm just overwhelmed with emotion, uh, just remembering how important the support of the League was to me and my own troubled life. And uh, I'm so proud of the League being founded by a New Yorker. And uh, New York has such a wonderful history in helping women. Seneca Falls, the first women's rights movement. And I want to make a special shout out to the leaders that are here from New York. We're very proud that of the three major civil rights movements, um, the civil rights movement, the gay rights movement, and the women's movement, two of them originated in New York. And I, I want to thank not only, uh, uh, I've got to get all these names straight, We've, I've got a Carol Scott, who was uh, not only the president of the New York Junior League, but of the association, and is on the board of Seneca Falls that carries the history of our founding mothers who worked so hard for us to have the right to vote. And, uh, and Susan Danish, the CEO and executive director of the AFLI, and, and uh, our current president, Suzanne Manning, who's been such a great friend and supporter, our current president, and Ellen Rose, the past president and past president of the association, and Charlene Chang, our executive vice president, and Lauren Chang of the New York Junior League, all outstanding women. And I, I thank you, Shuba, for your energy and introduction. And uh, I thank my daughters and my late husband uh, for being there with me and all my friends and colleagues, some of whom you saw on the tape. Uh, I am so deeply, deeply grateful uh, for the opportunity to be here tonight, just not just to thank you for this honor, but to thank each and every one of you for the work that you and the League undertake on behalf of all of us, men and women, children and seniors, citizens and new arrivals. I am deeply humbled to receive this award, named after our founder, Mary Harriman, who made it her life's work to help those who were underrepresented and underserved. She was a courageous woman who did what was right and what was urgently needed, and what was a, and she was far ahead of her time. And she did it despite the fact that people all around her often told her that what she wanted to do was absolutely impossible. And that was what she was trying to do was also unpopular with many of those that were in power. So this award will have a place of great honor in my home so that it can remind me every day that if history has taught us anything, it's that when a woman like Mary Harriman speaks out for a just cause, takes a stand, calls for change, social justice and equality, all the powers that be may call them crazy, shrill, and unrealistic, but uh, history uh, will call Mary Harriman and all of these trailblazers right. Uh, As I, as I recognize the, as I'm being recognized today by the Junior League as to be honored, I'm reminded that of the uh, many uh, female leaders who were not only never honored or, or recognized, but some were even vilified, fighting for and, and, and exercising their rights. Uh, for example, Susan B. Anthony, uh, who worked so hard for women to have the right to vote, was put in jail for symbolically voting. And Alice Paul, who was a uh, distant relative of mine, she was the author of the Equal Rights Amendment and one of the heroines of the suffragist movement, uh, she was jailed three times and put in an insane asylum because she thought that women should have the right to vote. And we can't forget uh, poor Joan of Arc. Uh, we know how her story ended. <laughs> And she saved France. She literally saved France. But she was burned, not just by the press, uh, but she was literally burned. And, and today, uh, today she's a saint. All of them are inspirations uh, to all of us. And in more recent history, just this past week, there was uh, uh, Tammy Jo Schultz, who uh, saved 148 people in a plane that almost blew up. Uh, 
she, she tells a story that uh, when she went to a meeting in her school about becoming a pilot, they told her she was in the wrong room. When she then told them, well, I'm in the right room, I do want to be a pilot, and they said, you're wrong. There's no way that a woman can be a pilot. Well, she sure showed them, didn't she, with her steel. And uh, quite frankly, I believe that she should be in a National Women's History Museum for what she did. But of course, there isn't one. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, right there, there is no comprehensive museum anywhere in our country dedicated to the accomplishments of women like Mary Harriman. Now, we have what I call sliver museums. We have the Seneca Falls Museum in upstate New York on our founding mothers. We have the Arts Museum in Washington, uh, Women of the West, uh, Annie Oakley. We have many, many museums, but not one that is dedicated to the contributions of women. I was walking around the mall trying to figure out how to pass the Equal Rights Amendment, and I thought, of course this is something that everyone would agree on. Well, 15 years later, I still haven't passed it, but I'm working on it. But when you walk around the mall, <laughs> when you walk around the mall, they have museums for everything. They have it for all, every ethnic group. They have it for stamps, for tapestries. They, they have it for space. They have it for law and order, but not for who makes up half the population, women. Everybody had a mother. And we've been an important part of the entire history of this country. And uh, I, I find it unusual that uh, the, the, the NRA uh, has a, a museum sort of the law and order, and they're in the Constitution, and I support the Second Amendment. But I find it unusual that guns are in the Constitution, but women are not in the Constitution. And I think we should work hard to pass the Equal Rights Amendment. Now, I, I like to uh, sometimes uh, uh, compare the, the Junior League to the NRA of the women's movement. And I mean it as a compliment, because it is a force to be reckoned with. Like the NRA, you have an energized uh, membership. You're in every single state, every single community, in most congressional districts. So you really have the power to bring the voices of the people to your representatives. And if the NRA can be so influential in so many ways, we can certainly use our influence and our passion to create a new renaissance where equality governs. And in my years in Congress, I've passed many, many bills. In fact, there have been uh, 11 of them where you received the rare honor of a presidential bill signing ceremony, including one just last week, one that uh, passed a bill on sex trafficking where we took on the internet companies uh, that they could not advertise and sell uh, young boys and girls illegally, really, on the net. And we won, it was signed into law. Uh, I passed. Uh, I passed many, many bills, but I don't want to talk about the past. Uh, being in public life and the league is really about the future and what you want to do in the future. And I, I feel that now is the time with the energy of the Me Too movement and Time's Up movement to use this energy to finally have one museum in the United States. When I went around the mall, I thought there was a, it wasn't on the mall. I've since, since found out there's not a comprehensive museum dedicated to the achievements of women. The men have all the rest, all the rest, all the presidents and generals and everything else. We, we should have at least one on the mall of the United States Congress. If the league got behind it, it would surely pass. None of these legislators are going to say no to the New York Junior League. Or their, con or their leagues in their neighborhoods. And you should applaud yourselves. That's, that's a lot of power. That's a lot of accomplishment. And I, I think it's now long past due uh, to pass the Equal Rights Amendment for women and fully and completely honor the noble ideals laid out by our founding uh, documents that we are all entitled to equal justice under the law. It's so important to get the guarantee of equality into the Constitution because the list of injustices are just way too long. 
they 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 should not be we should not be uh, dependent on who's in power you can have a congress that supports you and a supreme court and a president but it can change and too much of my time in congress is spent holding on to victories that we've already earned that like-minded men and women have already passed only with a uh, ironclad constitutional amendment will we be able to enforce equal pay for equal work because if it's not the law of the land then it's not enforceable it's that simple I've seen many Supreme Court cases go up to the Supreme Court on rape and be thrown out saying you don't have standing women are not in the Constitution the only time women are, are mentioned is in the 19th amendment that we passed and worked so hard for that our founding mothers did so, so we need to get this done, and we need to pass the Equal Rights Amendment. It's not going to be uh, easy. We're going to have to be uh, Wonder Woman strong, especially strong to make it happen. And uh, we need to get it done. And we need to mobilize and organize and, and, uh, and, and express. Uh, if you got behind it with your full support for the passage of this amendment, um, we could um, make it happen. I really do believe it. Now, I want to share how hard it is to get something done in Congress. Uh, one day, this is a true story, Patricia Schroeder, is Colorado here? Is Colorado here? Great, great, great uh, legislator from Colorado. It's one of those nights we were voting at like 2.30 in the morning, and she comes up to me and she says, it's going to take a New York woman to get the women out of the basement. And I said, well, what are, you, what are you talking about? And she said that back when they passed the uh, right to vote, the 19th Amendment, Alice Paul had commissioned a statue of three of our greatest leaders, Susan B. Anthony, Lucretia Mott, and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. And the, the beautiful statue stood in the rotunda, the living room of the Capitol, for exactly 48 hours. There was an inscription that read, Women empowered with the vote will rise up and realize their full potential. This inscription was removed and called blasphemous, and the women were sent to the basement. By the way, I'm trying to get the inscription back on the statue. Anyway, <laughs> so I thought, this is easy. This is just moving a statue into the rotunda. So I put a bill in with a Republican friend of mine, and it took me six years. I couldn't believe it. And we were really working on it. So I started a newsletter on all of the excuses fit to print, which was every reason that they came up with why the women could not be in the living room of the Capitol. All of our great revolutionary leaders were there. There was a king and, and uh, Lincoln and Washington and Jefferson, all the great leaders, all male by the way, but our revolutionary leaders that led us to the biggest uh, advancement uh, ever, where half the population gained the right to vote, were, were stuck in the basement. So I, I'm just gonna give you three examples of what they, they gave as reasons. First, I call it the engineer's excuse. They said that the floor could not hold it, and therefore they could not move the statue. Well, we had to go out and raise $48,000, it's a true story, hire an engineer who did a report that said, of course the floor can hold it, it was there before, and then scientifically prove that, that it could hold it. Another one, they said, well, we can't move any new statues in. And uh, meanwhile, they moved in the disgraced Vice President Agnew. Remember him? He went to jail for being a crook. Remember that? They moved his statue in, but, but not the women who fought for our right to vote. And, and this went on and on. Well, we finally, they said, at the end, they said, well, it would cost us $750,000 to move the statue. Can you believe that? We went out and raised 750000 to move the statue. And we finally passed it. I talked to Newt Gingrich. I said, it's history. He loved history. He finally agreed we should move the statue. So we were in the women's caucus room talking. And uh, one of my Republican friends came running in. We were all excited. We are going to move the statue. She said, I just came from the Republican caucus. And they said, we cannot move the statue. Uh, we could move a, another very attractive statue in of some woman. I don't even know who she was. But she was very attractive. And I said, well, why can't we move the statue? And she said, because the women are too ugly. <laughs> Patricia Schroeder, not missing a beat, said, 
have you looked at Lincoln recently? <laughs> so our founding mothers are proudly in the rotunda of, 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 of the Capitol. Go and see them. If, if there had been a Junior League then, I'm sure they would have been a member of the Junior League. And I think that our challenge is to find our own passion and our own goals in our own lives that are anywhere nearly as important as what they accomplished, giving us the vote from which should come all other power. And our founding mothers thought that the two main goals should be to have the right to vote, which would bring us the power, and secondly, to pass the Equal, Equal Rights Amendment. 130 nations have an Equal Rights Amendment. Ours does not. And when we help other countries write theirs, as we did in Afghanistan and Iraq, we write it into their constitutions. But it's not in our constitution. And I, I feel that uh, I would like to pass the Equal Rights Amendment and a women's museum. And I don't think you can pass the Equal Rights Amendment unless you recognize women. How can you empower women if you don't even recognize their achievements? I believe the League could play a monumental role in achieving these two goals that would help and empower women everywhere. And I only want to end by quoting another great New Yorker, Eleanor Roosevelt who always ended her speeches by saying, it's up to the women. If you want to get something done, it's up to the women. It's up to you. You're part of the, one of the most powerful women's organizations in the greatest city on earth. Uh, receiving your honor today is an honor of beyond my imagination of achievements, and I am deeply, deeply grateful for your friendship and your support. Thank you so much. It's up to the women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what happened to me. Mm -hmm. I'm re returning to the traditional role of women, cleaning up the mess. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you, Congresswoman Mahoney. Uh, you are an inspiration to all of us. Thank you for being a role model to Junior League members everywhere. Like Mary Harriman, you have been guided throughout your life by an extraordinary sense of social responsibility and have leveraged your abundant abilities to be a catalyst for the improvement of your community, changing the landscape and its people forever. We are privileged to have you as a member of our organization and congratulate the delegates from the Junior League of the City of New York who join us in this celebration. Thank you. This concludes our Mary Harriman Award Luncheon. Please feel free to take the table centerpieces as keepsakes, but be mindful of giving first preference to those leagues whose Mary Harriman Award winners are depicted. And please leave the frames behind. <laughs> Enjoy the next set of workshops, which will begin at 1 o'clock.